What a tangled web. What a tangled web we are living in, my friends. I struggle to collect my thoughts these days. I don't know if anyone else feels that. I struggle to get them to coalesce in a way that makes sense out of all that is happening in our world. And I recognize that, that some of this is the impact of everything that has happened in recent years. Right, the mental compounding impact of existential threats and collective suffering from the outbreak of COVID to all that has filled the news in the past few weeks, the past few days. It is a tangled, tangled web. One which we're all trying to navigate. We're all asking ourselves, what do we do? What can we do? I know we're all asking it because I've heard it being asked from you, from friends. I was just at brunch yesterday and a friend looked at me and said, what do we do? We're all trying to navigate all while we attend to our smaller spheres. We attend also to our jobs, our children, our spouses, our coursework. We attend to our own joys and celebrations and griefs and pains. Paul's words from Romans are so fitting. We know that the whole creation is groaning. There are days when I, I feel this in my bones. Humanity and the earth and all the beings that we share this planet with are crying out, it seems. We are groaning, as the text says, in labor pains. As I've sat with the scripture this week, I have found this metaphor of childbirth to be so helpful. Because I've sat with it and prayed with it and reread it, I've found that Paul is providing a way for us to frame these times in which we live. Times that are indeed challenging, but are not the first challenging times that people have lived through. And so Paul is providing a way for us to navigate in the midst of this tangled, tangled web. Now, I have never given birth yet, <laughs> but I'm learning a lot about it right now as I get closer to my third trimester of pregnancy. Like the good student that I am, I am preparing. <laughs> I have interviewed doulas, I'm reading books, and I have talked at length with the people in my life who have labored to bring a child into this world. And something that has been impressed upon me is that childbirth is a process. Those of you who have done it before know better than I Childbirth doesn't happen all at once. It's not quick, and it is not easy. 
Labor is a process. And if you didn't know, there are stages, stages where different things are happening. And each stage requires a different form of engagement, maybe a different position, maybe a different thing to be doing. To reduce it way down, you could say that there is a time to breathe, and there is a time to push. And they depend on one another. In order to push, one needs to breathe. And I think sometimes that we forget to breathe, especially in the times of groaning. It's paradoxical because often the moments when we feel that we can't stop to breathe are the moments we need it the most. I mean, how many of us, be honest, jettison prayer, a therapy session, coming to church, taking a nap, sitting down to actually eat a meal because the pressure is on? We sacrifice the deepest needs of our body and our soul because they can seem expendable in the face of a deadline or sometimes a headline. We heard the words of the late poet John O'Donohue earlier in service. He was an Irish writer who had this wonderful sense of this need to breathe. And this poem, simply entitled Blessing, was written in a time where that might have been difficult. It was written in a time of grief. The poem is a dedication for his mother following the death of his father. This poem is an acknowledgement and an invitation to stop and to breathe and to let what is there wash over. Hear again some of his words. May the nourishment of the earth be yours. May the clarity of light be yours. May the fluency of the ocean be yours. May the protection of the ancestors be yours. I don't know about you, but for me, even just hearing it, my shoulders, they drop just a little. John O'Donohue, in, in his many books, writes about his definition of spirituality. And I was coming to this definition this week and, and thinking about today as, as Homecoming Sunday. He defined spirituality as the art of homecoming. Spirituality as the art of coming home to ourselves and coming home to God. It is the practice of coming home in the wake of death in the wake of crisis, in the midst of joy, and in the middle of the tangled, tangled web. Paul puts it a little differently, but I think he's talking about something similar when he writes about our moments of weakness. Moments when we don't know how to pray. Moments when we, did, we don't even know what to pray for. I've been there. Moments when we struggle to coalesce our thoughts in a way that makes sense out of all that is happening in the world. Paul says that in these moments, the spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. Isn't that beautiful? 
that the Spirit intercedes in a way that is beyond even spoken language, meeting us just in the depths of our being. The Spirit intercedes with nourishment of the earth, with clarity of light, with fluency of the ocean, with protection of that great cloud of witnesses. In those moments, the Spirit welcomes us home to ourselves and to God. There is a time to breathe. And there is a time to push. The metaphor of childbirth reminds us that the groaning is for something. I don't mean here that all suffering has a purpose. That's not what I believe. That's not my theology. But the groaning can have a purpose. Labor has a purpose. Labor is the process of bringing something new into the world. So if all creation is groaning in labor, that can be scary. <laughs> Maybe some of you who have seen someone give birth have thought, wow, that's kind of scary. <laughs> It can be enraging, and it can sometimes be disheartening to be in the midst of it, but it can also give us hope. Because childbirth doesn't mean that things are ending. It means that things are in process. Childbirth means that something new is trying to emerge. And so in that, we can have hope because we can have impact. John O'Donohue put it this way, everyone is involved in the creation of our world. Everyone. Every adult, every child, every elder, every teenager, every lawyer, every refugee, every politician, every custodian, every single person is involved in the creation of our world. And you are either doing it intentionally or unintentionally. That's part of why I think it's so important to breathe before we push, because if we don't breathe, we are going to be stuck in a place of reactivity where we are unintentionally impacting others in ways that are harmful. Everyone is involved in the creation of our world. All of creation, Paul says, is groaning in labor pains. We are in the process of birthing something new. And if we're doing that, we need to know when to breathe and we need to know when to push. It's a rhythm of engagement that Paul is teaching. It's one that we see in the life of Jesus. Jesus knew that he needed to breathe. And if you read the Gospels, you see it. Jesus goes off to pray. Jesus very famously takes a nap on the boat in the middle of the storm while everyone else is going, hello, what are you doing? Jesus knew that you need to take the moment to breathe and pray and come home so that when you start to push and heal and minister, you're doing it intentionally and thoughtfully and from a place of being grounded. This is a way of living faithfully in the world that keeps us connected to God and energizes us to do the work, the necessary work as Pastor Veronica so powerfully preached last Sunday. There is work to be done. There is pushing to be done. in this rhythm of engagement. But the, the final thing that perhaps this writing from Paul gives us, or at least the final thing I will mention today, 
is that he reminds us that it isn't just us. It isn't just humanity. It isn't just creation that is groaning and laboring. It's also God. Childbirth means that God isn't done. God isn't done with creation. God isn't done working on us and with us and through us. Yes, we have received the gift of salvation, the freedom from sin and death, but God isn't done yet. God didn't pack up the tools and leave. God is also groaning and working and breathing and pushing and laboring. And that, perhaps more than anything, gives me hope. Because if God isn't done, then neither are we. Amen.